It will be no exaggeration to say that engineer Dr. Vincent Maduka's era as the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, triggered off digital and technological revolution and a sense of purpose and pride among practitioners. Engineer Dr. Vincent Maduka was such a meticulous and hands-on multitasking professional who made sure broadcasting was done in tandem with international best practices. He indeed made a distinct mark, which has placed him among the legends that helped to properly position broadcasting for the digital age. Engineer Dr. Vincent Maduka's 80th birthday anniversary, which took place on the 5th of October 2015 at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, Victoria Island, Lagos, attracted a legion of his colleagues, who are also legends in their own right, with whom he joined forces for the crafting of the beautiful story of broadcasting in Nigeria. It was a day the Nigerian media fraternity stood still to celebrate a thorough professional who gave his very best to broadcasting. Of course, he was given the conjugal support of his amiable wife, engineer Mrs. Olu Maduka, who was the first female president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. There couldn't have been a better way to celebrate this professional per excellence than to take a thorough introspection into how Nigeria can quickly join the global community and the new ways of communication and technology practice. The 80th birthday lecture to celebrate engineer Vincent Maduka was titled Communication Technology and Leadership, the Scorecard and the Future of Nigeria in the Global Arena. The lecture which was delivered by a consortium of erudite lecturers, among them broadcasters and other leading media practitioners, gave a broad insight into the topic at hand. The chairman of the occasion was Dr. Michael Omolayo, who was for many years chairman of Liver Brothers Nigeria PLC, extolled the virtues of the celebrant engineer Vincent Maduka as a man of many parts, who was twice the director general of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Today is a very joyous occasion. Uh, Vincent Maduka has been well documented in what we have in front of us here. It, but it's more than what is put here. I regard him as a complete gentleman. <laughs> Even at 80, he's still as straight as a shocker tree. <laughs> um, now, he represents many things in this country. He doesn't blow his trumpet, but today some of us are going to blow his trumpet for him. The speakers at the event included Professor Patu Tomi, Dr. Biodun Shotumbi, who retired as an executive director in the NTA, and Professor S.A. Sani. Dr. Biodun Shotumbi's lecture on television journalism, education, training and practice presented him an ample platform to revisit the evolution of broadcasting in Nigeria and how engineer Vincent Maduka as the DG then was able to motivate practitioners then to be their very best. He also dwelt on how the celebrants began his broadcasting career at the Western Nigeria Television Service WNTS in 1961. It is to engineer Vincent Maduka's eternal glory that he stood his ground and ensured that NTA had the best equipment for transmission and production gadgets comparable to the best in advanced climbs. In 1974, I was recruited by the engineer Maduka led management. This was the situation. And I'm the product of what they had then as the graduate policy. The need to in inject university graduates into the newsroom. One, to make sure that new ideas came into news production and presentation and, and broadcast. And two, to make it possible for these young people, once they trained on the job, to relate to the growing elite in the western region 
who wanted television to speak to them, to relate to their ideas, to talk about their challenges, to talk about their environment, and to relate them to the emerging future in both the West and in Nigeria. According to Dr. Shotobi, it was during engineer Vincent Madoka's tenure that graduates in relevant areas of mass communication were given a pride of place in the system. Engineer Vincent Madoka could be regarded as the one who raised the bar of intellectualism in all aspects of broadcasting, and this led to the growth of the practice. Indeed, that was the golden era of broadcasting, particularly in Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Professor Sani's lecture was on failed partnership and misled priority in technology education in Nigeria. Professor Sani, who is an educationist of note, said the only way to redress the falling standards of education in Nigeria today is to improve the welfare of teachers and that more emphasis should be placed on technological education, which is a ready tool that can make the young ones become self-reliant and employers instead of employees. We keep on talking about technology development. It's not possible. You can have it. We don't practice the culture of technology. It's not there. We don't have it. We don't have it. It's not there at all. Without that culture, we cannot develop. Now, technology education, what do we expect from the graduates? We expect them to be leaders when they come out and for a technologically developed country. That's what we want. But what are we doing now? We are producing half-baked engineers who are perpetually preoccupied looking to exploit the society for their personal advantage. Professor Patutomi says it all boils down to leadership, the yawning disparity and the way things are done between people of the developing countries and the advanced climbs, without any doubt, has a lot to do with leadership deficit, which the developing countries, including Nigeria, are still grappling with, sadly, even in the 20th century. Professor Patutomi was of the opinion that Nigeria, particularly, needs to build stronger institutions to complement focused and purposeful leadership. Professor Patutomi wished that if we had many more Nigerians who are focused, patriotic, and selfless, like the celebrant engineer Vincent Maduka, Dr. Malayo, and others, who have by their exemplary leadership qualities etched their names in the sand of times, Nigeria would have been the better for it in all aspects. Be effective in leading, communication is critical. Because you have to communicate your passion for service to the people, for the people to take ownership of you and your ideas, then you have to put forth a vision that they will come to own. This is why the leadership process is essentially made up of three parts. One is preparation. If you don't prepare yourself, you can't lead. The tragedy of Nigeria is that those who have never prepared themselves are given the authority to take Nigeria in a direction. The second is visioning. You have to see a tomorrow and translate, transmit that tomorrow clearly to the people and they will take ownership of it. Because they take ownership of it, people are rowing in the same direction. And the third aspect is execution. The challenge of execution really remains one of the great big challenges of our time. It is my hope, it is my expectation that unless and until and that when we all commit to a new order, we will force our system to produce those who can truly lead and bring us to a new destination that we desire. Professor Patutomi, like many Nigerians, hinges his hope in the much-needed change to take us to the next level of development. There were more accolades, encomiums and eulogies for the celebrant, who many more people, especially those who had gone under his tutelage, 
confirmed as the pathfinder of modern day broadcasting and the visioner of the golden era of the Nigerian Television Authority, a period when things were professionally executed because practitioners were properly equipped and their welfare well catered for. We can see today how far the reach of Nigeria Maduka's influence is. Maybe just as much as the influence of NTA and its reach being the first TV network in Nigeria and in Africa. One thing was clear, he was a very disciplined person and a very disciplined boss. Most of it, he didn't care whether you were a woman or a man. And he totally disregarded the challenges that faced a woman working in a man's world. Congratulations. And, and we'll be here when you are 90, when the chairman will be chairman, and I'll be here to tell another <laughs> I'm very happy for the two of them. I'm extremely happy for the two of them. That they are first and first in their profession and in public life in Nigeria. My son. The chairman and I will be at your next birthday. The celebrant, engineer Vincent Maduka, a proud alumnus of the King's College Lagos, was honored by his former schoolmates, who all gathered to sing the school anthem. In his birthday remarks, engineer Vincent looked back at his school days, which he said he enjoyed tremendously and the long years he put into the broadcasting profession, thanking God for granting him the grace to pull it through successfully on all fronts. He thanked his wife, engineer Mrs. Olu Maduka and the children for their love and support, which was very instrumental to the success he recorded on the whole during his tour of duty that spanned more than half of his entire life. I want to thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Sir. I have to blow my wife's trumpet. She will be the next president of this academy. The vote of thanks was given by the celebrant's daughter, Dr. Mrs. Aunli Omotayo Okoli.